What's up guys? I just wanted to give you a quick tutorial on the brand new advanced image block. It was just released by Cadence Blocks and it's this block down here. And using this advanced image block is going to give you tons of extra options if you add images within your block editor. And I'm gonna quickly go over all of those added features and settings and what you can do with it and how it differs from the core Gutenberg image block here. And so if I just click in here and if I were just adding a regular image block, so if I just do a slash image, this is just the core image block that came in the Gutenberg editor and I click this here you can see that the block options on the right hand side here are extremely limited. I mean, all you can do is leave this default, which is boxed or go rounded and make the image rounded. And really that's about it. And so let me just remove this here. I just recreated a simple team block here. It shows six different team members. And I built this all with the core Gutenberg image block. And so let me just click on one of these. You can see that the options here on, on the right that I was just showing, you know, you can make this image rounded like this and you had, uh, you know, different image size and you can change the image dimensions and really that's about it. And so I'm going to change this into an advanced image block, which is really easy to do. And I'll show you all of the extra settings and things that you can do with, with images now. And so if you come up to this uh, button right here, I'm gonna click this and I'm actually gonna transform it into an advanced image. And so once I click that, you can see that nothing visually changed within the editor here, but on the right hand side, I'm now on an advanced image block through cadence blocks and I have so many more settings here. So I have image, spacing, border, link, shadow, mask, caption, and an image filter settings. And so let's go through each of these. Um, so let's first uh, look at the image settings here. So here I can just edit the image that I'm using here. I can get rid of it. And there's also a dynamic image and cadence theme just recently released a theme builder which allows you to completely take over your archive page layouts and so many things. And so being able to have a dynamic image option is going to be huge for building layouts and things like that. So that is amazing. You have your image file size here. So I just have a 300 by 300 image here and you can come in here and you can change it to a thumbnail or whatever it might be. And you can also use a fixed ratio instead of an image ratio if you would like to override that. There's a max image width, which is really nice. So if you don't want your image to go or to be any wider than a certain amount of pixels, you can set that. And then you have your alt text and your title attribute, which were on the core Gutenberg block, which will help with SEO and all that fancy stuff. So that's your image settings. And then let's go into spacing settings here. So this is really nice because before you had zero spacing settings, if you wanted to add more space around your image, you just, you had to write custom CSS and it was just a pain. And so now you have padding and margin settings. And so let's just preview this really quick here. And let's say that between this image and the title, say I just want more space for whatever reason. Um, I'm just gonna go in here and I'm going to take the margin and I'm gonna set it to 60. And so now I can preview this and now I have 60 pixels of extra margin uh, between the image and the title here. And so having spacing options on uh, images is huge and there's so much that you can do with that. So that's really nice. I'm gonna just get rid of this here. And now let's look at the border settings here. So now you can really easily add borders to your images. And so let me just uh, do a border color of this and we'll do a border width of um, three pixels here. So you can see that it just added a border around the image and so that's nice. You can change the background color and your border width and then you can also do the border radius if you want. So let's just do you know 20 here and let's do 20 in the bottom left. And you know, you can just kind of give a cool effect like that. So that's pretty nice. Uh, let me just set this back here and I'll actually just get rid of the border for now. And now let's look at link settings. So link settings, this is pretty simple, but you can just link to whatever you want for this image when someone clicks on this image. This also supports a dynamic link. And so you'd be able to dy dynamically read in the link that this image links to, uh, whether it be you know to a post or whatever. So that's really sweet. Now let's look at the uh, shadow settings here. And you can see there's something new here. If you're used to cadence blocks, this is a, a new setting. And you have box shadow and drop shadow and you can actually learn about the differences here, but I'll just show you really quick here the differences. 
So I, if I set a box shadow here and let's just make this fully black here and um, we'll just leave it like that. It looks good in my editor right now, but actually if I, uh, if I hover over the image itself, you can see that the highlighted area is larger than the image itself. And that's because I actually sized these images down a little bit um, to 250 by 250. And I'll just actually show you in a preview here. When I have the box shadow added, it's putting a box around the entire element area. And so obviously that doesn't look good. I only want the shadow to be around the image itself. Say you had a circle image and you added a box shadow, you're still gonna have a boxed shadow, hence the name box shadow, around your circle and it's not gonna look good. But what you can do is if you have an image that you don't want the box shape to be applied to it, is you can add a drop shadow. So I'm gonna actually turn this off and I'm gonna turn on drop shadow. And again, I'm just gonna make this uh, fully black and um, we'll just leave that and we'll preview this now. And you can see that now the drop shadow, it takes in what the image shape is and only puts the shadow around the image itself. So this is going to be fantastic for using different shapes and masks and things like that on your image and to be able to have a shadow that looks really good around it without just having a, a weird looking box around it. So now I'll take this drop shadow off and let's look at the mask settings. This is really cool. So there's a different mask shape. So you can come in here and you can set your image to be a circle or diamond or hexagon. There's even different blob shapes. And so this just gives a really cool effect, um, you know, that you could add different blob shapes, you know, let, let me just change this into an advanced image here and let's come down here and go to mask settings and let's do blob two, right? So you can start making, you, you can start giving some creative flair to your images and things like that. And I think this is so cool. And if you think that the mask settings are limited, well, Cadence has you covered. There's a custom option here. And so you can upload a custom mask image. So if you have a shape that you want your image to mimic, you can simply just upload a mask image here and your image is just going to take on that shape. And so that is amazing. I can't wait to see what people do um, with the, ma the mask settings here, especially the custom mask shape. The next settings we're gonna look at are the caption settings. And so, you know, if you add a core Gutenberg block image, it always says this add caption thing here. And sometimes people use this and sometimes they don't, but it would be really nice if, you know, you didn't use the captions, if you could just turn it off. And so now you can, you can just come in here and you can click this button and that caption just disappears. And if you want it there, you can come in here and now you can, you have a lot more options. You can change the font size. You can change the line height, letter spacing. You can transform the text and change it to a different font and all sorts of things. So if I just, you know, change it to this color here and I just say test caption and we'll just preview this quickly here. You can see that I now have a different colored caption here, and obviously I can I can do all sorts of things with the text there. So that's that's a nice uh, addition to the core Gutenberg block. And so for now, I'm just going to uh, turn off the caption and let's look at the image filter. So this is where you can add a filter to your image, um, which is really nice. And I think this is actually better suited for an image like this. So I just added an image uh, through Unsplash here. So I'm gonna open up the image filter and we're actually gonna, yeah, this is a, an advanced image already. And so this is what the image looks like just originally, but I can come in here and I can set grayscale on it. You know, I can add saturation, I can add a vintage look. And so there's a number of different image filters here that you can, that you can have. And you know, when you go to look at these, these are gonna mimic that same thing, but this is really cool. You know, if you wanna add kind of a more vintagey look uh, to your website and, or certain images, you can come in here and just really easily add an image filter without having to go through a photo editing app or anything like that. So that's all the options uh, that we just went through here real quick. Uh, I think that this is amazing. This is a long overdue block, especially for the block editor in WordPress. Images just did not have many settings at all. And Cadence Blocks comes through once again. You know, this block is available through the free Cadence Blocks plugin. So it's amazing. I would highly suggest uh, downloading Cadence Blocks if you haven't already and just give it a shot and see what you can do to make your images more creative. Thanks for watching.